I guess let me let me thank the entire uh, local first AZ team. I think you guys do outstanding work in support of all of us here in Arizona. So thank you for that. I'm excited everyone to be sharing with you some things that we put together for our our own community, and I'll I'll let you know what that means here uh, in just a second. But as soon as the COVID-19 pandemic hit, you know, I, I, I still remember, it's one of those moments where you remember when the, the gravity of it started to hit and you go, wow, this is gonna be bigger than any of us expected and things started to close down. I remember where I was and what I was doing. Uh, my kids were on spring break. We were up in a community called Forest Lakes uh, east of Payson, we were up in the pine trees, just enjoying the week together as a family and all the messages started hitting of cancellations of events and travel plans that weren't going to happen and schools closing and all the things that all of you experienced. I, that, I experienced at the middle of March and I knew pretty quickly that we needed to make some changes in our business to be able to serve our customers. So who are our customers? My business is called Elite Entrepreneurs. You can see that on the screen there. Uh, our website is growwithelite.com. We serve seven-figure businesses. Some of you will be familiar with the name Infusionsoft. It's a software company based in Chandler, Arizona. It used to be based in Gilbert, but we moved to Chandler several, several years ago. And inside of that software company, I was working for Infusionsoft at the time, but inside of that company, we we started sharing our method for how we successfully grew that business with our small business customers. So we started sharing the way that we grew Infusionsoft successfully in terms of the method, the business growth method. And we ran that business inside of the software company. It was a separate business for about six years. And then two years ago, I bought it and we spun it out and it's completely separate now. Um, but we spend all of our time helping seven-figure business owners with their business growing challenges. So all, all of our customers were being hit by the COVID uh, pandemic and all of the resulting closures and shutdowns and all the rest. Uh, as, as I know, many of you have been impacted significantly as well. And the pivot that we made was we can't we can't have live events, which is something that we we would do. We would have three events a quarter, and we just we're always doing events with our members and um, we knew we couldn't do that anymore. And we knew that our customers would be trying to figure out how to, how to make their own pivots during this time. So we quickly went to work and we put together a resource page that I'll share with you guys later if you're interested. And on that resource page, we knew that business owners were trying to do two things. Like all of their attention was on managing cash and leading people. The right way. So those were those became the themes for our resource page, managing cash and leading people. And we just put a ton of effort into that for about five weeks. We, we did two calls a week, one that was geared towards managing cash and one that was geared towards leading people. And we just we just served and served and served as many business owners as we could. So we reached out to local first AZ. We let them know that we have some material that we think would be helpful. And because I, I'm from Arizona, I grew up here, I live here now, I have a business here, I think, why am I serving companies all over the world when I should be serving more of our local companies? So uh, this is our first opportunity to share with the local community things that we've been sharing with businesses from all over the country and even uh, other parts of the world. So I'm excited to be here with you. Uh, whether or not you're a seven-figure business, just because that's where we focus our, you know, that's our day job <laughs> with uh, elite entrepreneurs. We spend our time helping them from 1 million to 10 million in that range. Um, the things I'm going to share with you today apply to every business, any size, okay? So don't, don't get stuck on me saying our focus is seven-figure businesses. But now you know a little bit about us, and I, I've been serving in small business for the last 12 years between Infusionsoft and this elite entrepreneurs business, and I absolutely love, love serving small business owners, and uh, I, I, am, I am one, so I'm one of you, and here we go. 
All right, so here's what we'll cover. I'm, I'm actually sneaking in a little extra value for you guys today. I hope you don't mind. Uh, this first bullet, how to lead when people are struggling with fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I know Local First AZ has had several speakers. I'm sure somebody, I, in fact, I saw one that was on a topic like this. So I'll, I'll keep that to a minimum. And then we're gonna get to the creative, affordable, practical examples for you to engage, basically to engage three audiences, your team members, your prospects, and your customers. What can we do during these unusual times to get creative? And, and I have some really fun, uh, affordable and practical examples for you. So let's get rolling on that. Your job as a leader, just as a high level framing, this is something that I always share with our members and I just wanna share with all of you. If you take nothing else away from this call, maybe none of the examples I'm gonna share uh, resonate for you or you, you find any you know, practical application for your, your business, your situation. But I'm, I'm confident if you are the business owner in your business that you will, uh, you, you'll at least appreciate me trying to simplify the many hats that you wear. So I know you wear a ton of hats. So the first hat that we all should wear as a leader is the set the vision hat. That's our number one responsibility as a great leader. It's to set the vision, help people understand where we're going, how we're going to get there, the why behind all of it, all of that really good foundational set the vision work is your number one responsibility as a leader. Second, we're gonna build the team to go accomplish that, right? Whether that's hiring people, and, and right now, maybe not many of us are hiring, uh, but, but the other part of building the team is, is building up the team that you have, meaning not, not by adding new team members, but strengthening the team that you have. And what I shared today will definitely fall into that. And then you all know the green box says, don't run out of money right? That's, that's the hat that it's hard for us to take off because we're, we're constantly aware of it. Uh, in fact, in times like this, we might be looking at that checking account. Uh, you know, I, I imagine most of us are looking at it daily. Some of us maybe multiple times a day. So you might want to call that one, don't run out of money. When we're in more of a proactive stance, I like calling it secure fuel for growth. So that's the framing. So let's move into care for yourself and others before we get into the creative examples that I have for you. So that we're going we're gonna to apply the oxygen mask principle here. Um, I would venture to bet that most of you on the call have been going pretty ragged for the last, if, if, not, if not closer to eight weeks, six weeks straight, you've just been running, running, running doing everything you can, right? Lots of grit, lots of tenacity, lots of late hours, looking for ways to survive the pandemic, uh, for your business to survive the pandemic. And uh, I, I think most of us as business owners have this like almost superhuman ability to keep going. But if you don't take care of yourself, you're not gonna be able to lead others effectively. And you're certainly not gonna be in a place where you can apply any of the creative examples that I'm gonna share with you. Okay, so we, we do need to, to help ourselves here. I have a few ideas for you. I'm not gonna go into this in depth. Again, I know Local First AZ has brought other speakers and I'm sure that someone has talked to you about ways to take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, like every, every way. But uh, here are some ideas. I have a, a daily routine to keep myself grounded. It involves many of the things that I have listed here. Uh, whatever helps you stay positive and healthy personally, I'm just gonna ask you to make that job number one right now. If you're not well, you cannot lead effectively. You cannot be in the creative place, creative problem solving place in your mind if you're not taking good care of yourself. So you're gonna need clarity. Uh, I've got a couple ideas there for how you can get more clarity. I, I teach my community a concept called personal offsites, where quarterly you get offsite away from everybody else and just spend time doing that good critical thinking about your business, getting clear about your objectives as a founder or owner and how those match up with the goals of the company, getting clear about the strategies in the company, getting clear about the team, the condition of the team or the health of the overall well-being of the organization, right? All of that good critical thinking needs to happen. You, in normal times, that should happen, I would say, on a quarterly basis. In, in times like these that we're in right now, 
it probably needs to happen a little more frequently. And maybe you don't take a full day to go off site and do it. But if you need to get a couple hours a week just to get your mind clear, to get yourself settled, uh, that's, that's a really important thing for you to do. And then I don't, I don't want to underplay the role of others, right? So personal offsites is being very introspective. It's getting clear with your own thoughts. And then time with mentors, coaches, peers, advisors. How can we go out and get the, get the support and the ideas and the encouragement that we might need? So, so there's a good combination there of internal, um, internal reflection and then getting some help from the outside. Take care of yourself first. That's, that's my number one thing for all of you on this call. Okay, then how do we shift to caring for others? Your team members have the same needs you do as a human being, right? Now, they may not have that same founder, um, you know, superhuman gene that you might have. And I don't know what it is about us as business owners that we could, we could just keep going. We're kind of like that old Energizer bunny whoever's old enough to remember those ads, um, the Energizer Bunny just kept going, right? And so we, we do that sometimes as business owners and we kind of expect that everyone around us will do the same. We can't, we can't view our people that way. So we have to think about how they might be dealing with FUD. And I'm sorry to use an acronym. Let me tell you what that acronym means. It means fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So if you've never heard that term, you can't use logic to overcome fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So if your team members are in a place of being concerned about the pandemic, uh, maybe they have you know, immune deficiencies in their, own, in, their own, uh, in their own personal health and that being exposed to that virus would, would create an unnecessary risk to them. And so they might have some real, real fear, uncertainty, and doubt about their own well-being. Maybe they have family members close to them in that situation. Most of us have older family members who might be more susceptible to getting that, uh, that virus. So there's very real stuff going on for people. And we have to be in a place of acknowledging, helping them understand that we, we understand they are in a, in a different place. So you can't just say, well, here's all the reasons why the business is going to be fine. You got to start with, how are you doing? Where are you at? Right? Maybe they're worried about paying the mortgage. Maybe they're worried about, um, you know, an elderly parent. Maybe they're worried about whether or not they're going to have a job um, in the next couple of weeks or the next month. So there's all these things that could be going on for them. And, and our job as leaders is to make sure we're in a good place and then help them to be in a good place. So we have to instill that belief and confidence. And again, whatever will help them stay positive, that's where we want to be directing them. All right, just like you, they need clarity. So they need to know what's it going to take for the business to win? And then what is their specific contribution to that? What's their role in the bigger picture? And these are things that are in, in any normal times as well, right? You've got to have that clarity to be able to move forward with confidence, to contribute, to feel like you're part of a winning team. Like that's, that's good business all the time. Now it's even more important. Okay, so let me transition. I hope, I hope uh, as I talk about some of these leadership best practices that um, now you're like, hey, I came to get some creative, creative ways to help my team members, prospects and customers. I promise. Here we go. We're, we're moving into that. But I wanted to acknowledge you cannot be in this creative space unless you take care of basic needs for yourself and your team. So you got to get that addressed. And it's not just to check the box. It's going to take some real work on your part, some great leadership for you to step up and make sure you're well and make sure your team members are well so that then we can move forward. So here's some best practices during times of change, like the one that we're in. You cannot communicate enough. So I, I am a strong advocate of daily huddles. Um, right now, you and I, we've, most of us have never met, yet here we are meeting over the use of, uh, we've got the use of this Zoom meeting tool or platform. Um, whether or not it's Zoom or WebEx or GoToMeeting or a Google Hangout or whatever tool, there are ways to get your team together right now. And I highly recommend that you're touching base on a regular basis. Weekly one-on-ones 
is something that I encourage um, in any situation, right? Business as usual should involve weekly one-on-one -on -one connections with each of your direct reports, each of your team members that report to you. Now, if they report to another leader in the business, you don't have to touch one-on-one -on -one every single team member in the company. But if they're all reporting to you still, then weekly one-on-ones is important to make sure they're getting the clarity, the support, the coaching, the follow-through that they need. And that's especially important right now. Um, you may be one of those great leaders who says, hey, everybody knows I have an open door. They can come talk to me at any time. Um, even if that's true, you almost have to go out of your way to say, how's it going? Come see me, right? Lots of, lots of communication. All right, I probably hit that point enough. Okay, and then if you wanna keep the team focused, you need to understand what's happening outside, but not, not to the level of you know, hourly refreshing uh, the CNN news site or you know, abcnews.com or MSN or wherever you go for news. If you're constantly refreshing that thing and your people are constantly refreshing that thing, all they're gonna get for the most part is negative message. Right now you need to manage where their head headspace is. You need to manage the, um, the nourishment that's going to them mentally. And if it's all the negativity, that's all they're gonna be able to process is negativity. So you as a business owner need to understand what's happening to the extent that will allow, to the, to the degree that it will help you make the best decisions for your business. But if you guys are plugging into that stuff 24 seven, it will pull you down. Uh, and I mentioned news sites. Uh, that's, only one, that's only one source, right? We, we have a constant feed of information to our, to our smart devices, our phones, everything is giving us information. So whether it's, it's social media, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever we're getting news information, and, and this applies to your people, we can't let the negativity overwhelm us. So we've got to make sure that we're staying focused on what has to happen every day to win. All right, so let's get into some great examples here. So um, if you're from Arizona, certainly if you're from the Phoenix area, you might even recognize these people. This is Mark and Alexis Breyer. They are the husband and wife law team. Uh, they happen to be customers of ours, but that's not why I'm putting them here. They did some really great things with their team that I wanna share with you that I think has been an absolute uh, benefit to not only their team, but to their business during these unusual times. So um, almost immediately, Mark and Alexis made the decision together that they were gonna be keeping everybody employed through the end of June. So as soon as things started shutting down, they knew their employees' minds were going into fear, uncertainty, doubt mode, or could be going there. And so they wanted to stop that immediately. So before there was ever a CARES Act, before there was a PPP loan, the Briars communicated to their team, hey, whatever happens, you have a job through June. Like we, we know we can keep you settled through June. Like we don't want you to worry about it through that time. Let's focus on creativity and problem solving. Let's focus on customer service. So they, they wanted to get their people's minds really focused on things that they didn't have to worry about. And so they took that off the table right away. Now, wouldn't it be nice if all of us had the cash position in our business to be able to take that concern off of people's minds. Not all of us could afford to do that. Um, so I'm not suggesting, hey, you should all go out and tell people they're going to be with you for the next three months. What I, am, what I am teaching is a principle and apply it to the extent that you can in your business. And the principle is, is this, help people get out of fear mode around their personal safety, right? Their, their job security. So if you guys are, are one of the businesses who were fortunate enough to secure a PPP loan and you let the team know, hey, I, I was able to secure two months of runway for us. Let's stop worrying about that, about whether or not we're gonna have a business or a paycheck. Let's go to work solving real problems for our prospects and customers. And so I thought they did a really good job of putting their team at ease. Uh, some other creative things that they do, they do, they use Zoom and they get their team together and they do some really fun things every single week. So one week they did uh, a little, you know, a homemade version of, uh, it was Wheel of Fortune and then Jeopardy. Uh, they've done, you know, music and hat day. So everybody comes to their Zoom meeting with a funny hat. So they're just doing fun activities to keep people lighthearted, positive, 
Um, and then they get right away to, so they do something light and fun, but then they get to, all right, here's the focus. Here's what we got to do. So they're, they're trying to ease people's concerns, keep some, some positive energy going, and then they, they steer or narrow that focus right to where the team needs to be performing. So I think that's a great example. One more thing from their website, and hopefully you guys have done stuff like this, but I love that they did the same thing for their prospects. They said, hey, don't worry about not being able to communicate with us. We have found a way, whether it's video conference, text, chat, you don't have to leave your home. Now you can get all the help that you, you could before in, without leaving your home. And in normal times, you might use a message like that as a, as a differentiator to say, without leaving the comforts of your home. Well, this has nothing to do about leave, with leaving the comforts of their home. Now, everybody's stuck at home. So we're, we're acknowledging that, but now we're saying, hey, you can still get help. We can, we can serve you without you leaving your home. And so I thought that was important for them, just like they were trying to set their employees at ease, their employees' minds at ease, they're trying to set the prospects' minds at ease that even though we're in an, in an unusual time, we can still help you. All right, so whatever you can communicate to employees, prospects, customers that says, hey, don't worry about the unique circumstances, we can still make this happen. One of our customers uh, is a company called Singles Travel International. You can imagine of all the industries out there, some of them got hit really hard and one of them was travel, right? What they do is they organize singles excursions on, on uh, cruise ships, right? So they, they set up a cruise, their members book, uh, book rooms or they, they book travel with them for that cruise and then they organize events and activities for the, the older singles that they cater to. So what they did was pivot really quick. They got the, the leader there, her name is Tammy Weiler. Tammy said, hey, I pulled my team together and we just got creative. So she set them at ease and then they went to work getting creative. And what they came up with is, we need to facilitate live connections. We can't do that on a cruise ship right now, but we can do that via Zoom. And so they did, I bulleted some ideas down there, but they did some things like, hey, we're gonna go to Greece today. So we're having a lunch in Greece via Zoom, and they had one of their concierge team members who was like the tour guide, and they had this expert who knew Greece really well, and they did this experience where they were able to share some pictures, uh, talk about some of the cuisine, or right, some of the local foods and customs, and they had a virtual lunch in Greece. More importantly, they got members together on a call that could have some connection, not just with their business, but with each other. All right, so they did some wine tasting that way. Um, they did some CEO updates where those calls would happen just as a way to connect with the CEO of the company. But I, I thought it was really creative for a travel company to recognize really what we're facilitating is live connections. What are some things we can do in this environment to create some of those same benefits? Okay, uh, Melissa, it is almost halfway through our time. Let me just check in with you and see, do you have any questions coming in that I can help with? Do you have any, um, any tips for me here as we, as we go into the second half of our presentation? No, everything's going good. And at this point, we do not have any questions. All right, let me just reinforce for people that uh, I, I'd much rather have a dialogue with all of you. I know we have muted lines and I understand the necessity to do that. But if you have questions, um, if you've done some things that other people could benefit from, let's, let's pour into this. If you're multitasking and you're trying to do this, not gonna serve you very well. And so, I, you know, with muted lines, it's a little harder to get full engagement. But if you use the chat box to share some comments or, or ask some questions, we can make this a little more interactive. All right, but I am just warming up here with the first couple examples. I got a lot more for you. So hang on there. Um, most of us is, have seen some version of this, but early on, one of our members is, is uh, a guy named Matthew Gordon. He's, in the, he's up in Connecticut, and his son is in a, is in a local preschool, right? He's at a, a little school, and the preschool was shut down, just like all of the schools where we live were all shut down. Well, the, the teachers and the faculty got together and did a little card parade and went around to 
the neighborhoods where their students lived and, and stopped by. I mean, they didn't stop, but they rolled past. They let the families know, hey, we're going to be coming by your house sometime in this window. And the parade of cars goes through and they're, they're waving and just giving messages of, of positivity and connecting with their customers, with their students. I thought that was a fun idea. And I've seen lots of versions of this. Maybe you guys have as well. But just think about what are some of the principles involved in these examples? How could I tweak them to make them useful in my business? There's a, a company also in the Northeast called Maine Cottage. And if they do design work to help people figure out how to make their spaces more functional and more beautiful, right? So they, they're acknowledging, hey, there's social distancing going on, sheltering in place, but you can still take advantage of a courtesy remote consultation. If you can get on the phone or via Zoom, we can start talking to you about your space, some of your, your color choices, some of the furnishings that you might be considering, patterns. And our, one of our designers is, is willing to get on a courtesy remote consultation with you. So you don't even have to leave your house and we can start talking about how to make your space uh, better for you, know, for you, more enjoyable. So I thought that was a cool example. Uh, this is one out of Texas. It's, it's a place called Communion Neighborhood Cooperative. So you can see across the top, the navigation bar on their website, neighborhood restaurant, coffee shop, co-working space. So if you think about some of the co-working spaces you've seen in Arizona, this is like one of those, but they also had the coffee shop and a neighborhood restaurant. And so just like all the other fruit, food preparation businesses, uh, restaurants out there who were forced to shut down or, or you know, provide curb, curbside service only, uh, this company decided, here's what we'll do. We'll turn our, our normal service where we just you know, people come in and they order, we're just exchanging a product for dollars. We'll turn that into a service. And so they created a subscription where they would sell a family meal every week to your family. And in that subscription, they had, they made room, they knew how much they could do. They could do 500 meals a week. And so they sold 400 and they gave away 100. So for every four that they sold, they gave away a meal to somebody in their area who needed uh, some assistance. So this was a way to really connect with their community. This is a, is a very local type of business, like many of ours. Uh, local first, AZ, right? This is one of those retail brick and mortar types of operations who found a way to pivot from selling products, which was, which was meals, to now a service, and to throw in the community giving aspect. If For every four of these subscriptions we sell, we'll give away a meal to somebody who's in need. Really, really cool example. So what are some ways that you can, if you sell a product today, is there a way for you to turn it into a service or subscription of some, of some sort? Uh, and, and whether or not you add on this idea, there's a separate idea around giving back to your community. So how can we combine things like that to make it uh, more viable for us to stay a, a relevant concern in our, in our communities? Okay, next, next examples come from Vern Harnish. Some of you might be familiar with Vern. Uh, he's behind Scaling Up, which is, his company is called Gazelles, Gazelles, but he has a book called Scaling Up. Before that was called Mastering the Rockefeller Habits, changed it to Scaling Up. Anyway, great, great thought leader, uh, serves businesses who are trying to scale. Um, he shared his own experience after 9-11 for his business. He called and offered all of his customers who could stay on board a discount if they would prepay for the year. So right now, as we're all trying to manage cash, are there ways to bring cash in early just to help us bridge some current you know, short-term cash needs? So if you have any, any sorts of, if you have a membership of some sort, or even if you just have customers who pay today, is there a way to sell them future services at a discount if they'll buy now? Um, and then on top of that, he offered this VIP status for the life of their membership. So as long as you're a member, you're going to be in the VIP status. So maybe you create a VIP experience of some sort for your business and say, if you guys buy and prepay now, even, uh, even after the current thing expires, you remain at this VP level as long as you continue to use us, uh, as long as you continue to patronize, patronize our business. 
So I thought those were some, some good ideas to pass on. And then Vern held a, an event probably similar to this one where he shared some other ideas uh, that one of my team members went to that event and, and we gathered some of those ideas to pass along to you. So, um, oh, before, sorry, before we get to the next ideas, I love this. I love this counsel from Vern. He said, the storm has enveloped Everest. Right? He related this COVID-19 thing to a storm enveloping Everest. You can't see further than what's in front of your nose. So the only thing to do is put one foot in front of the other and keep moving up or down, but keep moving. Energy is like water. It will stagnate and go bad if not moving. <laughs> I'm really sorry to read this to you guys, but this is really good stuff. Make stuff happen one hour at a time. So you guys have been doing this for the last several weeks. But just break it down. What can I accomplish next? Then take a break. Then do the next thing. One hour at a time. Eight to ten things a day. Just keep going. And then he gave he gave an example. Um, the daily huddle is critical. Vern's always been a huge proponent of daily connection, so that we can get, uh, so we can come together as a team. But we get clear on what's the next thing. What what is our focus today? What do we have to accomplish today? And so the daily huddle is critical. And he was like, hey, you might even get together a couple times a day. The, the bottom line with all of this is that the visibility for all of us is super low right now. We can't see very far out. So we need to get clear on what we can see, get focused on those action items and help our team do the same. Okay, so here's some examples he shared. He shared the example of this company called Timberlane. Their whole business is custom exterior shutters until March. Okay, shutters and shutter hardware. That's what they did. You can see the beautiful picture of the home there from their website. Now they're manufacturing personal protective equipment. So they were able to pivot pretty quickly to a, a space that was super relevant right now while the rest of their business was just tanking, right? They were looking at shutting down completely, furloughing everyone. They were able to, to move into something that was needed now. Another example he gave was from Flow. Uh, flow is a really cool idea. This, these are 3D printed honey hives. And this specific example is like five years old, okay? And, but, but take away the nuggets, all right? The nuggets are, these guys didn't have a lot of cash to go to market with these printed, these printed honey hives, 3D printed honey hives. So they went to one of those platforms uh, where you can go and pre-sell your idea and so they went with a $600 price point and they started selling before they made any and they sold $12 million in 30 days. Now, is this an extreme example? Yes. Will that happen for all of us? No, but the principle is sound. Think about something new that you could do if you could finance it. There are platforms out there that you can finance your idea. You can go get cash to make it happen by pre-ordering or, or pre-selling excuse me, pre-selling some of the finished product. Okay, next idea comes from a residential painter. Um, any of you who have service businesses where there's kind of a, a before and after opportunity, this, this painter had many before and after photos over the years. But guess what, guess what happens? You all know, we get busy doing our thing every day. We're painting houses, we're um, cutting hair, we're, whatever our local business is, that's, what this painter was doing. And, and finally, now that we have a little quote unquote downtime where we can't go do our normal thing, he got really busy putting together some before and after pictures, going back to those customers, asking for permission to post them on their website. Um, he was able to offer 25% off a future painting project to be completed this year if they prepaid or put money down. So he, he's using a combination of ideas, but I'm, I'm sharing a full list of ideas with you so that you can go, all right, what's good for me? What could be possible? So I'm just trying to trigger ideas for you and your team. Okay, and then I love title. I love the way that I titled this slide, uh, which sounds funny that I'm, I'm sort of giving myself a pat on the back. But if a landlord can do it, it's just stop for a second. I don't know if any of you are landlords, but just by nature of the relationship, a landlord and a tenant, there's, there's, Nobody sends customer satisfaction surveys to their tenants, right? Like nobody's happy about paying rent typically. And so there's this built-in adversarial thing that happens between landlords and tenants, right? There's this, I don't know, 18th century type of connotation to it, slumlord, right? Well, 
if a landlord can get creative, all the rest of us can do this. So this, this guy named Ron Lovett out of Halifax, um, he was able to get his tenants to engage in a competition. So they did this lip sync contest and they were, they were aiming the contest at staying close to their team, close, excuse me, close to their, to their community, right? Their tenants. And they put together a prize, said, hey, you could win a thousand bucks if you win. And so they got 350 entries and they got some really cool creative things. Now, whether or not this lady in the, the facial mask there and the curlers with Godzilla, whether or not she won, um, she, she engaged and she got creative. And that created, that created a sense of connection with his audience, with his tenants. So he saw a 3.6% improvement in collections over the previous month as a result of doing this little contest. That's pretty cool. All right, events and services online. Some of you like, like me before the pandemic probably did live events of some sort or at least gatherings where maybe you did training, maybe you gave away um, uh, some sort of information product in hopes to convert them to some other membership, whatever, whatever the case, there were events and services in person that moved quickly online. And so these are some of the, the logos of members that we have who, who moved online. Breathe Education, I'll just, I'll call them out real quick. So they train Pilates instructors. They're a company out of Australia. And they did these the very in, you know, intensive two and three days workshops to train Pilates instructors on their method so that then those instructors could go and, and run their, be, their business using that method. Well, almost immediately, they jumped all in on online delivery of that training program. Now, you can't do intensive training two or three days at a time over Zoom. Right? There's only so much we can handle doing this Zoom thing. So what they did was break it up into smaller chunks. So they did a bunch of research and they found out, hey, most people's attention spans on this remote delivery stuff is, is like somewhere in the 60 to 90 minute range tops. And so they just broke up all their curriculum into smaller chunks. They deliver it over time as it's being consumed and they went 100% online uh, to the point where the, the owner came to me and he said, Brett, I, I kind of feel like this is probably the new way that my business is going to go forward. Even if things free up to where we could do live events again, I think we're going to stick with the online method. So lots of opportunities right now. Brooklyn Music Factory, um, as, as the name suggests, is out of Brooklyn, New York. They do live or they still do live, but they did in person, right? Brick and mortar music factory and people from around Brooklyn would come there and their kids would take music lessons there. All, all the instruments, um, I don't know if they did voice, but for sure all the instruments. So they have all these, these teachers and students coming to the Brooklyn Music Factory and it's shut down. Well, he was able to get 90% of their students transitioned to online lessons. So there's still the teacher, student interaction, uh, in fact, wh why don't we try this? Let me just see if you guys are still alive. Go to the chat box. If any of you have kids who take music lessons, are they st have they had any music lessons out of, the, out of your own home over, over Zoom or some other platform over the last couple months? Just say yes if you're still alive and you've had kids with lessons over technology. No kids, okay, piano lessons via FaceTime, yep. So we've had, we've, in my house, we're, we have a lot of music going on. So we've had piano lessons, virtual. We've had voice lessons, virtual. And we've had uh, viola, all, all virtual, whether it's FaceTime, um, you know, or Zoom or whatever. So the Brooklyn Music Factory did that same thing. And they've been able to keep all of their, almost all of their business. Um, great. You guys, thank you for engaging, even if you don't have any of these lessons happening locally, or excuse me, any of the lessons happening in your home via technology. Um, Iron Tribe Fitness, you guys, that's just another great example because fitness companies, like when the gym shut down, what do you do if you're a gym owner? And, and I don't know who's on the call, maybe one of you is a gym owner. 
uh, well, Iron Tribe Fitness, based out of the um, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama area. I think they're from Birmingham. Um, anyway, they have Iron Tribe Fitness locations across the U.S., but almost immediately they found a way to create community online and, and do some workouts together online. So did it, it did, is it still painful that their gyms are closed? Yes. Um, but were they able to keep their company afloat and their community engaged? Yes. So whatever we can do to keep people looking to us for the answers, coming back to us for the services that they've come to rely on us for, if we can keep as much of that alive, even if it's in a virtual delivery capacity, that the better. Uh, I won't get into the rest of these examples. Okay, so it, we've got about 15 minutes left. What I want to do is um, just take you through a few more slides and then we'll open it up to some Q&A. And if somebody wants to to brave what I would call a hot seat, where we just take your business and we start pouring into you ideas. Um, I love this comment. Thank you. I, I, I cheated, Melissa. I looked right at the chat. Virtual yoga class. That's happening for sure. I've seen that happen. Virtual concerts. Uh, lots of training. Yep. Lots of stuff going online. Okay. Thank you for that chat. Um, so when, and I, I put down in parentheses, this is not really downtime. You, I know you guys are hustling like crazy, but here's some of the things that if you haven't done yet and you still have some extra, quote unquote, extra time uh, where you, you may not be providing the, the product or service that you usually do, do, do some of these projects. Improve your website, gather customer testimonials or reviews, ask for referrals, clean up and organize things. Create new products and services. Establish new or, or renew old business development relationships. Cross-train your team. All of these things are probably, you have a list like this, the someday list, right? <laughs> I know you because I am you. As a business owner, there's so many great ideas and you have your someday list. I hope you've started to make progress on the most important ones already. And if you haven't, let me, let me nudge you in that direction right now. If there's any business improvement things that you can squeeze into your day right now, now's the time to be doing that so that as things warm up and things pick up, you can be engaging more powerfully. Okay, a couple more slides and then we'll do some open Q&A and maybe even a little hot seat for someone. Uh, one of the resources we put together on the resource page that I told you about, um, I'll, I'll share how to find that page, was a was a virtual teams, like how do you lead virtual teams webinar? Um, and, and I announced it and I was gonna put together some content because I have, I have some experience, but one of the people in our community raised their hand and said, hey, uh, we actually have something, this Kevin Eikenberry, he's got his own company called the Kevin Eikenberry Group, but he's also one of the co-founders of the Remote Leadership Institute. I had no idea there was something by that name. It's been in existence for like five, six years. Remote Leadership Institute. So while I have some best practices around it, these guys spend all their time and energy around it. They're experts at it. So uh, he came and did a webinar. And one of my favorite quotes from his webinar with us is that motion defeats moping. He was talking about how do we effectively manage these times that we're in right now. So motion defeats moping. I hope that you guys are thinking of of ways to, case, to, to keep moving in positive directions. All right, so here's, here's my parting content thought. Regardless of the situation, whether we're in a coronavirus pandemic or not, the best leaders build the best businesses. And specifically and intentionally use the word build because it's not that you run the best business or you're actively involved in the day-to-day -day of the best business, but that you build the best businesses. And the best businesses always come out on top. They always win. So if you, if you think back to the hats that I talked about of setting the vision, building the team, and securing fuel for growth, right? Not just don't run out of money, but secure fuel for growth. If you have those hats and you're in business building mode, your business will win every time. Now there may be competition. There may be catastrophic events. You might say, Brett, you don't understand. My business went from, you know, 100% revenue to 0% overnight because of this pandemic. 
I promise you, I've seen lots of scenarios like this, okay? Travel company, uh, a company that we support called Graduation Source. And right at their busy, their seasonal busy season, March, April, May, of all the high school graduations and the caps and the gowns and all that stuff, their business went almost immediately dry overnight, right? And so they've had to pivot. So I've seen, I have seen some of these bad situations, but the only way you ever had a business to begin with is because you created something. What COVID-19 is doing for us is inviting us to get creative, maybe even if it's a start from scratch, and I don't mean scrap the business, but maybe pivot completely in a new direction, you must create. And the only way you're gonna create is if you can engage the hearts and minds of your people in problem solving creatively, All right? I try to give you some examples of things people are doing. There's many, many more, um, but there are ways that you can solve real problems for real people using the strengths and the assets and the people that you already have today. It might look differently than you have in the past. It probably will, but the best businesses, excuse me, the best leaders will build the best businesses that survive coming out of this, not just survive, but come out even stronger. Um, so those are, that's my parting thought for you. Um, my sincere desire is that all of you get, not, not, not just get through, but that you find creative ways to build new strengths, new capabilities, to engage with people in, in new and creative ways that helps your business not just get through, but, but actually be stronger. Uh, so like I said at the beginning, we put together this resource page, just like Local First AZ is doing with calls like this. We were doing this for several, about five weeks. We did a couple calls a week for our extended community and our audience. And so I just wanna make it available to you. There's, you don't, have to, you don't even have to opt in. Okay, I'm a, I'm a terrible marketer. You can go there, you can get all the resources for free. You don't even have to give me your name or your email. All right, growwithelite.com forward slash COVID. We've got some stuff on there for managing cash, got some stuff on there for leading people. And I sincerely hope that you'll go get whatever will be helpful to you. Okay, we literally for the last eight years, companies from around the world have been flying to Phoenix to spend time with us. Okay, hundreds of companies from around the country and around the world to come and get time with us. And and for the last six months, I've started to say, you know what, I don't know why I'm not doing the work to go get plugged in locally. So great, great partners like Local First AZ are giving me an opportunity here to share some thoughts with you. There is a lot we can do to help you build the business that wins. And just getting through the current reality, uh, reality of the COVID-19 pandemic is, is the starting point, but there's, there's more we can do. So the last thing I'll say is, if you want some time to talk, and I'll see if I can do this without messing it up. Um, I'll probably mess it up, but I'm just gonna throw this in the, um, I'm going to attempt to throw this in the chat function. Just this one link. Whoops, I'm gonna move the whole box. You guys, you're, you're checking out my PowerPoint skills right here live. So I'm gonna get this link and I'm gonna put it in the chat box. If any of you want 30 minutes of my time, again, I'm, I'm a horrible marketer and probably even a worse salesperson. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna hard sell you. I'm not gonna push you. I'm going to be a resource to you for 30 minutes. I'm, if you just want somebody to creative problem solve with, um, we, you could sign up for time to do that with me. And I would love to give you some of my time to help as many local businesses as I can. So I'm putting this link here in the chat box. I'm hitting send. Uh, that's, that's the end of my presentation, folks. So we have time for Q&A. Um, if nobody has Q&A and, or nobody has any questions and somebody's brave enough to raise their hand and say, I'd love some real time, you know, some creative brainstorming with the whole group on what a business like mine could do, we have t 10 full minutes that we could just pour into somebody with creative ideas. So what do you got? Any questions for me? I see that some people already dropped off. Any questions you guys want to ask? Well, let me ask you this. What was the best idea? Go to your chat box, whether or not you have a question. Pull up the chat box. 
tell me what the single best idea was that you heard today that will that might be able to help your business i'd like to know if any of that's helping if any of it's landing for you so just go to the chat box and say this idea was gold or you know this was my favorite idea that would help me know if any of this is useful Hey, thank you. I have a brave soul. If your customers are not accepting your offer, do you keep trying? Uh, um, meaning explain it better. Um, so that's a really, really great question. Thank you, Marcy. Um, one of the resources, and, and I'll just go back to the previous slide so you can see it real time. One of the resources on uh, the resource page is called Generate Cash Now. And there's a guy named Rick Barrera, fantastic human being, uh, really knows how to generate sales. And he did a whole call for our community called Generate Cash Now. And he talked about putting together irresistible offers. And he talked about some other examples that I didn't even talk about today. So there's more examples on that call, but there's some principles that he shared with how to, how to create irresistible offers. So I'll give you an example. We have a two-day workshop it's a live workshop called Elite Forum, where we give the, the full elite business growth method, right? The full playbook for how you grow a seven-figure business without going crazy, right? All the resources, examples, templates from our time of doing that at Infusionsoft. We grew that business to 10 million, then 30 million, then 100 million. And we basically took all of the things we learned that work and we packaged it up and we started teaching it. Well, we did that in two days and it was called Elite Forum. And it cost $10,000 for a business owner to come get that. And it was worth every penny, okay? We, 10,000 bucks and the people who used it consistently applied what we shared and taught and gave them all the tools. Um, they, would, they would double, even sometimes triple their business in 18 to 24 months. Like this stuff works, right? So we can't do live events. We created something now called Elite Ignition. So it's a, instead of a two day intensive workshop, now we're creating a way where two hours a week, so every Thursday, tomorrow is our next one, Thursday for two hours, and then and so we'll, we'll deliver content for two hours and then we'll give action items or homework between those calls. Then the next week we'll give two more hours, but over a four week period, we're still delivering all the content of the two day intensive, but we can't do all the workshopping in that environment. So we took the price from 10,000 bucks and we made it more like two or three thousand dollars. And right now, people can start for two hundred and ninety-nine dollars. And so, there, you've got to come up with a concept and um, that fits the idea of an irresistible offer. And Rick Barrera talked about that. So we we brought the price point down to get started and to help with cash flow. There's a payment option, and we threw in a bunch to bone. We stacked a bunch of value, and we made it easy for people to get started. So I don't know the specific example that you're talking about, but um, yes, keep trying for sure. We want to test. So one of the things that Rick talked about on that generate cash now call is you test something and if it's not working, then you make tweaks and test again. Like you're, you're testing and tweaking until you find something that works. Um, so explaining, and, and I don't know from the question, this is the trouble with like written questions, but I don't know if you mean explain the offer better or explain the value of what you do better. So um, thank you for that. I hope I gave something that was useful. For Shelly, moving to subscription from product to service, the restaurant in Richmond, Texas was inspiring. Thank you. I'm glad that was a good example for you. Uh, reminding us not to stay focused on the negative messages. Yes, I'm glad that you said that. We're currently closed until July. Wow, I, I hope that's like, a planned closure, if, if not, because many businesses weren't planning on being closed. I'm glad you're doing some remodel, but there's a lot of, you've got to take care of yourself and I'm glad you're doing some walking to do that. Um, all right, how to collect the money fees for online training demos in an easy way. Great question, Joan. So because our business was born inside of that company called Infusionsoft, if, if you don't know what Infusionsoft is it, it's a software that does CRM, marketing automation, e-commerce. So it has, it has the ability to take payment. 
And so that's what we use. We use Infusionsoft for taking payment. And then there's a tool, another tool called uh, Go Spiffy or Spiffy that allows you to take payment right on your website in a fairly easy way. And it integrates with Infusionsoft. So our online sales go through Spiffy and Infusionsoft, but that those are in no way or no means uh, like my recommendations for the best way. Every business is a little bit different that way. There's lots of tools out there, uh, but we use that combination. And if you're looking for Infusionsoft to learn about it, they rebranded a year and a half ago or something like that. It's called Keep now, K-E-A-P. So if you're looking for a good CRM from a local company, Keep is, is still a great company. Okay, any other questions? I still got, I still got a few minutes. Um, somebody brave enough to have, you know, like unmute, we would unmute your line. You could tell us what your business is like and we could just give as many creative ideas as we can about your business. Somebody wanna do that? I don't know if I'm going out of bounds, Melissa, by saying we can unmute somebody. <laughs> oh no, they're, they're good to go. If they wanna unmute themselves, they're more than welcome to. Okay. Anybody want to take me up on that? We only got three minutes left. Uh, I have I have a little more time if it spills over as long as Melissa's not cutting us off. But uh, and I'm not trying to make her the bad guy. I know we have a, a schedule, but if you, if somebody wants to like say, hey, my business is this, and here's where we're struggling, I'm happy to give whatever thoughts I can in the, the couple minutes we have left. Okay, uh, Joan says she'll do it. So let's let's go. Uh, how do we and get? Just so you up? know, Brett, you have you can roll over the time. It's totally fine. We don't have like a hard end. Okay, and if you want to stop recording at any time, I don't care if the recording's in the Q and A that or the Q and A is in the recording. That's that's up to you. Okay. Um, but yeah, so Joan, how do we unmute you? Can you unmute yourself and we can talk? Unmute. There we go. Is that good? Yeah, I hear you, Joan. <laughs> All right. So, so tell me about your business. So I, I have my own fine artwork and I often have open studios where people come to my um, studio in Tempe and they look at the work on the wall and buy it and they commission new work. Um, I had just started teaching some classes at various places around town and thought, oh, I like this, I'll have more people come to my studio and take classes. Um, and then I, I do corporate commission, like large pieces for offices and homes. A lot of that is like going out to places and looking at it and talking with the homeowner. Right. Um, so I think there's a lot of possibilities. I'm, it's just me, I'm not, um, I'm not sure how much work I have to do to get up to speed on the, the technical, line aspects and i don't want it to look crappy <laughs> right no i hear you um well so at a, you, you were successful in getting into this call today i'll tell you uh zoom is is not that complicated so at a minimum you could use you could use zoom and there are free you know there's a free version of zoom it has time limits um you know i think you get 40 minutes but if you were if you were teaching a 30 minute class to somebody there is a there's a pretty easy way to connect with somebody via technology like this so mm -hmm. even if you have some reticence around being able to do something online i would i would take the i would just try to remove the reticence and say okay i know it's possible doesn't mean you know how to do it today but let's just take the ability out of the equation it is it is possible so how do you get in front of your people today? They come to your studio, they see your artwork, and then they get interested? Um, yeah, that, and I do shows around town, at exhibition spaces, and... Um, and that's pretty much, I mean, mostly dried up right now, right? Yeah, I need to re do a new website and kind of get a store on there and... Sorry. No, that's right. Okay, so... some. So for, for an artist who's, who's got a studio and does commission pieces, but also wants to do some training. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just say what, I am, what I'm thinking is that you have, you've got to learn how to do marketing better, right? Like that's a business, 
challenge you have is marketing, uh, yeah. whether or not we're in the current pandemic, right? Before the pandemic, right. it was still a challenge, but there were people walking around and, see, you know, cool spaces in Tempe and seeing your stuff. So that, that helped having some foot traffic. There's a group called, um, there's a group called Hound, H-O-W-N-D. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, and they're, they're very active with local first AZ and, and lots of businesses, but they, they generate foot traffic. So that might be a, a help for you to generate foot traffic um, to your studio when that starts to be a thing again. Um, I would, I would look at ways to share. Do you do anything on social media, Instagram or yeah. Facebook or? Yeah. And things like Instagram, I've been, um, you know, periodically I go through phases where I do better with that, but I was thinking probably come up with more of a calendar of regular posting and um, projects, things in process as well as finished. Yeah. How, how well have you been able to build a list over the years, whether that's a, a list of people that you can email to or follow? Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a, about a thousand people and a lot of those are people who have bought from me and they know my, they know my work. They and, know your work, yeah. So um, what you could do, you might be able to do like a fun contest. So think about that landlord who did a fun contest for the tenants. Uh, and I don't know what the contest might be, but maybe it's, it's create a piece of artwork yourself, right? Some sort of artwork and, and, you know, introduce it to me in a short video or share it, share it on an Instagram page or what, you know, wherever you want to drive people to get people involved in creating something and sharing it. And then mm -hmm. maybe you, maybe you offer a free lesson to the winner, right? And you say, okay. and, you know, yeah. so you're just looking for ways to be engaging people, get in front of them, especially since you got like a thousand people and many of, many of them have bought from you in the past. You just say, Hey, um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do this contest. I'd love for you to be a part of it. Um, and, and maybe they don't have to create a piece of art. Maybe they're sharing one of the art pieces that they bought from you. Maybe the contest involves share the piece of art that you bought from me and why you love it so much or what it's done oh, for your, yeah. For your space or people that have seen it and commented on it or whatever right and and so there's That's lots good. of yeah ways i thought can, the, yeah go ahead i thought the painter before and after that related to kind of what you're saying that's a good good idea yeah so yeah maybe the space before the art piece was in there and the space after it or maybe the best you know your favorite comment from an extended family member or friend, or, you know, somebody else saying something about that piece of art. And if they share those comments uh, or pictures of the art with some comments that they've gotten, maybe they win some lessons with you, or maybe, maybe you, maybe you start to, maybe you do a time-lapse piece of a piece of art that you're working on. I kind of like this one, Joan. <laughs> Maybe you say, okay, today I'm starting to do this sculpture. I don't know if you paint or sculpt or what you do. Maybe yeah, you do all I do of everything. It. Yeah. yeah, so I'm starting this piece of work and it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen over 30 days. Watch the progress. So every day you're taking a picture or, or maybe it's even one of those that you constantly have video on it and you just do the, you know, the, the fast forward and, and, you, uh -huh. and everybody gets to watch it happening over time. And then at the end of it, whoever you know wins your contest is going to win the piece of art oh. so there's lots of ways to get what you do in front of people that are engaging and creative i uh, just gotta just gotta think about yeah how to you and of all people you use some of your creative talent on, you know, <laughs> on creative ways to build your business right it's just another yeah. piece of art yeah that's good thank you you're welcome thanks for being brave and raising your hand uh, Melissa, we're five after. I, I appreciate the the allowance to go long. I don't see any other chats, and and probably most people have taken off by now. But um, I'm I'm still around if anything comes up that I can help with. All right. Well, then um, uh, you're going to go ahead and send me the info. Um, everybody that's in that was in this um, webinar, we did record it. And so I will be sending out an email whenever it's uploaded to the local first website. So make sure you keep an eye out for it. It'll probably be it tomorrow. Um, so I have a few meetings to get through. So um, you can make sure to look for it there and share it with um, your friends and other businesses. 
All right. Well, thanks again, Melissa and the local First AZ team. And I appreciate those of you who kind of stuck it out to the end. If there's anything I can do for you, please reach out. You can see my email below, brett at growwithelite.com. And of course, you can schedule some time with me as well. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Brett. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.